Welcome back to our acting analysis and tips for animators and today I want to take a look at the Netflix movie Alona Holmes. I got six scenes I want to talk about. The last one is a spoiler, but I'll mark it because it talks about the end. But before I do, if you're new to this channel, hi, my name is Shady and I do acting analysis clips like these. I do animation analysis clips, I do lectures, I do rip reviews, animation news, I post my feedback, all kinds of things. As always, feel free to browse around my channel. If it's something that you like, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss any of my uploads. And that is it. Let's go straight to the clips. So lots of little snippets here I'm gonna show, and this one is mainly about an entrance. I like how she enters the scene like this, pushing this up with her head only. So you might expect potentially hands, maybe gripping this and push, pushing this up, but it's actually, as we can see this, she's pushing that with her head here. And what I like after that is that adjustment here with the hat. So why do I like this? Because this, I, you know, if you watch my channel, I think you know I like entrances, especially if this is your real, this could be your title card name, year, you know, whatever, you know, email, whatever contact information that you have, and then whatever background you have, you know, black, whatever color you have, couldn't fade out into the set. And then as this fades out, bam, the character has an entrance and it make, gives it some, some good energy in your reel. Anyway, it's very subjective, but I like this. In terms of what you could use for this, I think this is an interesting way of opening something up that you would not expect. Maybe she has to hold on to something for security, she doesn't fall. Maybe she has to hold on to some props, but it's not what you would expect. You would ex probably expect something to be pushed through a hand or there's something that she can hold to push this up, whatever it is. And the extra thing that I like is that the hat is covering her eyes so that you have a funny entrance that concentrates on mouth shapes. So you can push that in your animation. And then you can have this where this would be more exaggerated, really pushing back the hat and then really showing off really big eyes and then it's like a second stage of your facial animation. And I think just in terms of practical usage, an interesting entrance with something you would not expect or a way you would not expect, showing off one section that you really want to focus on and then through that you can show off a second moment of again like a wondrous look here or whatever you want to do in your animation. But I think these are all interesting elements for a shot. The second moment here is a gesture as Holmes here tells her they get out of here. And she's slightly surprised. Oh, okay. <laughs> she's got that little moment of, oh, okay, I guess it's time, maybe I should leave. I think it's an interesting little extra thing that she has because of her prop here. So that's part of her timeliness and the things that she teaches. Here. It's an interesting little moment there. But what I like here is when she turns, watch this. She turns and goes, get out. <laughs> and she has to get out of here. There are many things here that I like, it's mainly because she just told her to stand here. That's the thing, she has to learn how to behave like a lady and blah, blah, blah. It's not her fault that she stands there. But it's just an, a moment of, it's an, a continuation of audio, right? Well, as he is done saying, okay, it's okay for you to leave. And as I always say, your, your lip sync doesn't have to end at that point. You can add this, this is part of your idea here. And that, if you have multiple characters, you can have that as a moment of get out of here. But she could be asking nicely, she could be pushing her away, or it could just be this out, or you know, a step to the side so I can't get out. It's just a simple thing, as people like to put gestures into you know, their animation. I like that little moment, it's not overdone, and it tells us that it's not you know pushy or she doesn't yell at her, but it's still very decisive and very clear of get out of my way. And I think it's a nice little touch. So if you have to have a gesture, maybe it could be part of something of how we get to understand how this character is and how this character relates to other characters in that scene. So she put herself into this basket, but then she wants to get out of there because she has a better idea or she needs to find an idea. And what I like about this is there are two things. A, you got the other character here and for clarity, potentially, you could have him or her, whoever you're gonna have, I don't know what that's a nose, but you have your second character in here, bigger in frames, so it's a bit clearer and it's kind of just the outline. But what I like is this, is that uh, she does this and he gets out of frame. So you could have something where just for context, we're showing she's not alone. There's another character, one or two, in the scene. So there are multiple characters. So that when she does this here, she talks and she does this. Shh. We understand that there's someone else there. Now, if your shot starts like this and there's nothing here and she does this and then that, I think it's clear that she'll be talking to someone else. Someone might think that she's talking to her finger. You never know. For me, it's always keep it very clear to the audience. So for your shot, I think this could be cool. You could have an extra character. It's simple animation, just very brief to show someone over the shoulder exiting screen. And now you can do all kinds of things where the character can't address someone that's off screen for some extra acting, some funny bits and pieces. The other thing that's cool is that as in the movie, she does a lot of breaking the fourth wall. She talks to the audience a lot. And here's a moment of, well, do you have an idea? She waits and then she does this. 
It is kind of like the pose, sub pose, where it's you're there, you did your thing, you did your gesture, you did your head move, whatever it is, and sometimes you have a moving hold, but how can you keep that interesting? How can you just hold forever? Maybe there's a moment where you keep this, it's just an extra punctuation of huh, huh? So you have a slight change in the hand, and you have a slight change in the head. It's still the same lean with the body, it's still the same idea of so, and, but you just give it that extra punch of huh? And you know, to me, again, that's like a pose, sub pose type of thing where you can just kind of add a bit more interesting complexity to a pose with a bit of a contrast and change without changing the whole thing. Next one is again a little combination of multiple things. This was just put into her office. She thinks this is from someone she has a bit of a crush on or she likes it's somewhat implied in the movie or maybe not a crush, but someone that she really respects. And the walk towards this, the delight of, uh-huh, this is for me. Yeah, 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 I love this. So there are a couple of things about this. A, Usually, when someone does a weight assignment, we usually do a box lift. Maybe it's not like this, it would be just a square. I did this as well. It's like basically like a, a cube. And usually you start just with the character there, bending down and then picking up the weight. This is exactly what I did as well. But it could also be more interesting of, well, what is this? And what is the character's relationship to this? Are they excited to lift this up? Or is this a chore? Is this some menial task that they hate? And this could be an interesting way of starting a weight assignment. So you show characters. It's not just body mechanics, but you can show like, ooh, I like this. I like what's in there. And look at this. I love all that before she opens it. I love that. Oh, that flourish is so good. Back, oh, so good. Love what she does with the hands here. One more time, a little bit of an inward move and then she gets ready. And then in a way it turns into a kind of the what's in the box gear change type of thing that a lot of students have to do in, in school. So she does this, has that, and I love that too. Just that very excited, Wee! She doesn't get too excited because in her world, everything is order and she can't get you know too flustered or have too you know, big moves here. So everything is still somewhat tight within her box, within her world. It's all very in character. But she's still very excited, e like that, and also like this here, how she holds that. Slightly spread out fingers, thumbs out. It's just also slightly delicate. And then she realizes that is not what I was looking for. And then it's just a complete contrast of no movement. And then just at a look and then a lean in of, am I seeing what I'm seeing? And she just sees this in here. So lots of things. How, kind of like an anticipation walk, showing character before you do something. This could be a, a weight assignment or a what's in a box gear change. And just looking at lots of movement, very excited and something shocking. For contrast, you then don't move, but you can't just stop. I mean, you could, but still you want to have a little bit of a reaction. That reaction would just be, huh. And again, this fits in her world where she doesn't move a lot. It's just that little, hmm, that's interesting because it's the proper way to do things within this world, whatever that character, you know, is, is has been taught to do. This one is a bit dark, it takes place at night, obviously, but I can just walk you through this. So basically she tells him that, well, I was taught to do this. This is what I learned. I'm going to do this. I'm going to fight. Are you with me? That type of thing, right? And before she said all that, she told him she is she does not embroider. And he his answer to all the things about let's go, let's do this. He goes, you haven't left embroider. Like embroider's right there. And then it's this reaction. Oh. All right, are we gonna do this or are we not gonna do this? And the reason I'm showing you this is that as people say, and paraphrasing, this is not me that came up with this, but acting is reacting. Like the main thing you have to pay attention to is that if someone is talking and you have another character in your scene, at least one other character, and they talk to each other, you have to make sure that they're really listening and focusing through whatever you want to do, eye darts, eyebrows, in terms of a technical thing about facial mechanics, however you want to show that they're paying attention and listening. For him, he goes, wait a minute, you're doing this? But the big thing to me is that, is that, oh, is that moment, and then she gets back to it. But this is not really heard in the audio. It's not a big sigh or gasp or grunting or anything. It's, it's mainly her voice, his voice, her voice. But if you animate this, he has this reaction. It's really, he's really not paying attention to what the important part is of what she said. And that's why it triggers this kind of reaction. So again, the reason why I'm showing this is that if you have multiple characters, make sure they really listen. And by listening, I mean, they also really react. Whatever he said is really going to annoy her. And that's why she has that reaction. And that's something again for you to add in. This is not in the audio. So now it's your creativity and this is your acting choice for your pantomime that you can put in there. And then you get back to your lip sync because then after that you're tied to the delivery, the timing and the rhythm of that lip sync. So this is all you. But again, it's something that's, it makes sense that she reacts like this. So just don't do something where you have lip sync, 
and then you stop moving your character. Then you got this character that says something, and then you just do lip sync, whatever. And then this character stops moving, and then this character gets animated to do the lip sync. Really make sure that the characters are listening to each other and reacting to each other to whatever they're saying. All right, last one is longer. I'll, I'll walk you through why I like this in the steps. Again, as always, why I think this could be actionable in your scenes, in your shot, in your sequence, whatever you do. But it is the end of the movie or parts of the end of the movie and a big moment of the end of the movie. So spoiler, don't watch this. And not that you would skip to the very end because this is kind of the end. So subscribe and continue and I got a workshop and sign up, but I'll pitch us at the end. Let's get to this last moment. Again, spoiler warning, just in case. So, what is happening here is that she enters her room, she was just told that she has a visitor, and after all this time, she sees her mother. So what I'm looking at is the continuation of, we don't see it here, and it's not like there's a shot where we see Alona and the mother, where we can see the distance. I think in your shot to make it clear, because we don't have the whole beginning and the whole movie as context, but if you would do something like this, imagine you got your room, and the mother is here, and the daughter is here, to show the physical distance, the spatial distance of, of those two characters, they're not together. The thing that's really neat in all of this is that she stays put. They haven't seen each other for so long. She has been looking for her. She probably knows that she is upset because she just left without telling her what happened and what's going on and why she left. So as she enters and they're talking, you can see this just, they stay put, they don't move. There's just that continuous mounting of tension. Now, I say this and she did just move, but it's a bit of a move, she closes this, but they're not together. And you can see there's a bit of a tension here in, the, in her arms. And the same thing here, you got a bit of a mirroring of posing. And it just continues on. You can see it's just this slight progression of getting closer, but she knows that she can't go to her daughter right now because there's too much tension just yet. She knows she's just a bit mad. She's just, I'm not mad, but a bit angry, oh, but just upset and disappointed. But it's just this slight moving towards her. Then you can see she stays and through that reaction right there, you can see ah, she's not ready yet. And this continues on where they're just staying put, they're staying put, they're staying put, they talk about things. And then finally she tells her, oh, I'm sorry. One reaction here. Then she says it again, I'm sorry. And okay, this is getting better. Now she explains why and why I left and what happened. And now she realizes, okay, it's, it's better. And she takes that step when she tells her, are you safe now? And the reason why I'm saying all this is because it continues on. They say things, they say things, and you got this mounting pressure of emotion, everything at the very end, finally, finally, they can embrace and release that tension, the emotion, and there we go. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because again, if you have a scene with multiple characters, Think about, well, why is there a distance? Is that needed? Is it better if they are close together? Is it better if they are, I'm gonna take this away here, if they are further away and throughout the shot, get closer? Is it important that only one character gets closer and not the other? Is it important that both get together at the same time, meet in the middle? Is that a symbolic thing of we meet in the middle and we're together now, we understand each other? and so on and so on. That's what I always tell, actually, all my classes that just started this semester. That's what I tell my students as they are now starting with planning their shots and adding sets or no sets or one or two characters. It's, this would work with multiple characters. Think about the spatial position of the characters. Is it important that they're far away, like I said, or close together? Would it be interesting to get a progression that they get closer or further away? Maybe someone makes an argument and every time they get closer, the character just always steps away and there's always this happening in the scene to show we're not in this together. I want to keep my distance and so on. So so think in terms of placement, how that tells us something about the character and the relationship between multiple characters so that your characters are not just staying put in frame. And of course, there's an exception. There's always an exception for everything. You can have a shot where a character doesn't move ever, which could be the whole point. There's a whole entrance in Silence of the Lambs where we come in and Hannibal Lecter just stays put. That adds extra creepiness of him being completely still in a set in a jail, jail cell or whatever prison that he's in. So there are many reasons for a character not to move, but also to move. And the reason usually why I harp on moving characters for students is that you want to show off animation and it, to me it's always it's not just animation for animation's sake but you want to show off your mechanics you can show off that you can do this for potential employers they can see you can animate you can animate we can hire them but still you don't want to keep it too simple because that you can do for your short for your thesis where it's a bit more about sequential storytelling with shots and scenes but if you have a shot in your demo really you really want to show off facial acting body mechanics weight all kinds of things and that's why i said well why not combine things why not do your acting piece facial stuff 
stuff, lip sync, but also move the character, but not just because you want to move it. My reason is always, is there something that will tell us something more about the character by movement and by distance or closing the distance and so on and so on. Speaking of distance, I got no segue. <laughs> I was thinking about it. Move distance. Maybe you want to move your hand towards the mouse and click on an email that's going to come in right now for my workshops. I really have no segue. I tried as I was finishing this with moving and distance. I have no segue, um, but maybe I have no idea. I'm grasping at things. I have workshops. So if you feel like this is interesting and you would like to apply this to your shots and need help and you want me to help you with your shots, then make your shots even more awesome. Feel free to subscribe to my workshop in the description. You got all the information. You can sign up at any time. And speaking of time, if you're still watching this till the very end, as always, thank you so much for your patience to take time to watch all my clips. And speaking of all my clips, I upload almost every day. So if you don't want to miss anything, feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button so you don't miss anything. And that is it. I will say thank you again and I will see you in my next upload.